Good morning. Good morning, George. How is everyone? It's Tuesday, isn't it? All right. Okay. Today we're going to do these these five guys over here. And I've picked two colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the stems in the opposite color that I do the leaves. So I'm going to have the dark one go here, here, and here for the leaves. So I'm going to do the stem in the light color. And then do the stem in the dark color on these two and the leaves light. So hopefully that will, you know, mix it up a little bit. So I've chosen no numbers, but it's like a purpley color blue, a blue with a purple in it. So we'll see how it works. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should swap them because then like the dark ones would be in the background, you know? Yeah, I'll do that. Have more of the light color. Okay. So just real quickly, I've got the dark color on my thread. And I'm just gonna do um I'm just gonna do a stem here for these three, and then we'll go back and and go in with the for the leaves with a different stitch. Now for these little stems, I think I'm gonna do a split stitch. I'm gonna do it like a long split stitch, not so short. What did I say? Yeah, these ones. I love those colors. Yeah, they're gonna be fun, I think. And it's something that I don't use very often. Hi, Natalie. So I think that'll be cool too. To be fair, all of these colors are colors that they're not like my go-to colors. They're a bit out there, you know? So I'm just doing the stem in this split stitch. Hi, Melanie. And it'll be a little bit uh, thicker than, I'm using three strands, than just like a regular back stitch. And I think that it'll make it so that we can see the stem through the leaves. So you get like a little bit, like a variation of your color. Okay, and let me just do a little half stitch at the end so that all the stitches are split or give the illusion of being split. Okay, so I've done just this one. It's hard to see with dark thread, but and I'm just going to hop over to this one because this one's also going to be light. And then this one here is also going to be light. Don't forget to go up into the, these little seaweed things that we had before. Hello. Lots of people join in today. That's fun. I booked my life in the UK test last night. Oh my God, I thought I was going to be sick because I was just so nervous. Good morning. And how far up you go into this, that's a completely up to you. Um, if you want to make it short like the, these other ones and just make the tall ones kind of on the edge, then of course you could do that. I'm just going to do mine right up in here. So I have that nice overlapping look to it, you know? But obviously if you don't want to, then don't. That's 
it's totally up to you. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back down here. How far can I get? Sometimes you can just tell when your thread is significantly shorter than it was before. And you're like, hmm, something doesn't feel right. And then on top of these, we'll be doing a detached chain stitch. And you can put it over the sides, three strands. You can put it over the sides, like just out from the sides. Or you can go in and put a couple overlapping the stem as well. So that part will be up to you too. Okay, so I've got my stems done. I'm gonna go back with the lighter color now on these dark stems and do the detached chain stitch. Now these ones you can start at the top or start at the bottom. It's completely up to you. I'm using three strands again for the lighter color as well. And then just like these um, here, you can make them really round or you can make them more pointy um, like they are on the drawing. That's whatever you decide. Oh, my hoop fell out. Let's just stick that back in. Whoopsies. I did it very good the first time. Okay. So again, you can work this from the top down or the down to the top, the bottom to the top. Um, completely up to you. And I'm just kind of tucking them in there. And we're going to do the detached chain stitch just like we did before on these little anemone guys, I guess they're called. Yeah, you're going to leave that loop. And then put your needle up inside the loop at the top of wherever you want your um, loop to end. Yeah, however big you want your stitch. So if I put it all the way up here, then my stitch would be that tall. So I just want mine at the very tip of this. And you're gonna pull it like that and then put a little stitch on the other side of that thread. Yeah, just a little tacking stitch there. Cause you're just gonna hold that loop in place. And we're gonna do this all the way up to the tip and then all the way down to the other side. So, Again, it just depends on how you want it to be. If you put these two stitches down here where you go up and where you go down when you make your loop, if you make them really close together, you're gonna get more of a loop on the, on the top. But if you put them more spaced out, you're gonna get almost like these pointy things like the fly stitch. So it just depends on what kind of a look um, that you would like to go for. You can go into the stem, you can tuck it in behind the stem. Up to you. So you can see with this one, the first one was more of a loop at the top, it's quite rounded. And this one here, I put the bottom two stitches, one down here and one up here a bit more, and it makes it more of like a V like this instead of a loop at the top. 
So however you want to do it, that is completely fine. You can go over top of this here and go uh, into your stem if you want to do a little bit of like layering and overlapping. Um, I just made the stems a different color so that you can really see, uh, well, this, the stem, you can just add a little different color in there, you know? A little bit of a different color. And then all the ones on the left are going to be slightly pointed up a little bit. Notice they're all on a little angle. And then all the ones on the right are going to go to the other side, pointing up that way. But really, there's no right or wrong way to do these. Just keep on going until you're happy. I will say I'm trying to keep them all a little bit of the same size so that the left and the right can be like almost like a mirror of a mirror of of each other a mirror of each other So everything so far is three strands. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We just, what is happening? That would be the lovely bit on that one. The one that's just a little bit off. Also, Jessie's not come down yet, so she might come down in the middle and beg to go out. Just FYI, she's still sleeping in bed upstairs. Apparently, she wasn't ready to get up at 8 o'clock when I got up. It was 7.30. She said, no thanks. And again, I'm just stitching over all of these other, other plants and the seabed here, stitching over it. Although I think this one's a little too far away. We'll see. can space these out a lot farther as well if you don't want them to be so pushed together. It's all up to you. So how is everyone? How's everyone's weeks so far? It's only Tuesday, but let me tell you, a lot can happen in a day. Anyone doing anything exciting this week? Got some plans? Make some moves? Anything?
now. Good, nice chat. Ah, oh, Melanie. She said, it's been lovely just stitching on my patio. We got an awning to cover it and it's heaven. We ordered some outdoor furniture finally this last week on Friday night. And I think it's going to come this week sometime. Um, because our backyard doesn't get any shade like after 11. So I've been looking at different umbrellas and stuff to try and see if I can give us a bit of shade because when it is sunny, it's like where we live because we're in a neighborhood. There's like no breeze. It's just like dead still, hot. You know what I mean? Like we're not like out in the country where we get like a lot of wind. It has to like be proper windy for us to get like any, any breeze usually. Someone's just said, I've been cutting out split stitch. We'll be catching up with stitch it with the stitch along this week. Oh, cutting out split stitch. That's not fun. Mm. What should I do with this? I'll go all the way down. And if it gets covered, it gets covered. Obviously, if you would like to make uh, these a little bit bolder, then you could do more strands. I did three strands because um, I knew I wanted to add a lot of little leaves and stuff here. Um, but if you wanted to use more, more strands, then you totally could. It's just going to make a, a wider line. So like say I've got 10 stitches on this, on this side, you might only get six because it'll be wider, take up more space. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're picking your strands. If you think, oh, three strands is going to take forever. I really don't want to do that. Um, that's okay. You don't have to. Veronica says, my dad and sister are coming over today for the first time since lockdown. I have seen them, but not here. Oh, that will be good. Almost out of thread. Yeah, that'll be so nice. Yeah, it is always good to see family. Like, I'm not going to see my family this summer. So please give all of your families, like, a big hug. Like, don't take it for granted, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this one. Now let's do some dark ones and let's see how that looks. Because that might be quite fun. So normally when stitching or painting, you want to do the background, what's in the back first, and then work your way forward. Because then if you have any overlapping things... Um, it's easier to overlap them instead of having to like stitch around them or, or try and slide your needle underneath. Um, so keep that in mind a little bit as well as you're stitching that, you know. It would be helpful if I put the hoop so that you could actually see it, huh? Hey.
I think these are going to look really cool next to each other. The like split colors and everything. I think it'll look really cool. Hello. Hi, hi. I feel like this fish is looking up at my stitching going, yep, you're doing a good job. Well done. Oh my goodness. Melanie says she's been stitching so much. She's building a callus on her pointer finger. <laughs> yeah, I always get them like here and then like on the pad of my finger here because um, tightening the hoops, especially, so yesterday I prepped like four or five hoops um, to like for actual orders <laughs> that I have to like stitch up and send out. Um, so I had to like make sure that they were really nice and tight and everything. And, um, man, my fingers were like shredded by the end of the day. I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> the other ones are going to have to wait until tomorrow. Oh no. Casey says, I'm waiting for calluses to build up. My fingertips are so sore right now. Man, there's like nothing that can really help it <laughs> except for taking a break or making sure you put like lotion on them at nighttime. And Veronica says, it's the side of my finger. Then I stabbed my middle finger the other day. Oh my God. You guys like I always forget how much that you actually use, like the tips of your fingers, like when you're stitching and everything, like you really do use them a lot. The secret stitcher says my index finger is shredded from stabbing it too many times. Oh, guys, you need to be more careful. I will say, I'm going to zoom out for just a minute. This looks a little bit gross because it's got all these like old threads on it and stuff but I've I have used this medical tape in the past see it's I told you it's got all kinds of old thread but it's just like this white tape like this and you can cut a little piece and put it over top of your finger or around your thumb um and that really helps if you don't have like thimbles or if you don't find thimbles comfortable or just straight up don't like them. Oh, Casey says, I'm using two leather thimbles right now, one on my thumb and one on my pointer finger. I could never get thimbles to work for me. I've tried and I've tried those. They have some like silicone ones that are like, like rubber, you know? But I never liked them. I never liked stitching with them. So I just gave them up. I was like, I'm, I can't be doing with that. But yeah, I forget why I got that. I think I must have had a cut or something. Because I remember um, my mother in law's a pharmacist. And so I, I had, I must have had a cut or something. Because she gave me like a lot of those finger condoms, you know, like the really tight ones and they're meant, they have like a rubber band at the bottom and you put them over your finger to like protect them from like water and stuff, like to protect like a cut from water. But I don't remember what actually I had wrong with me that I had to use one. But yeah, she gave me the tape as well so that I could put a band aid or something on it. And then you tape it around. Nice nails. Oh, thank you. I did it myself. 
I'm waiting for my dip well kit. My mom's sending me a new dip well liquid kit. Melanie says, so have I the sticky symbol dots over where I push the needle with my, my middle or ring finger. Yes. Okay, so we have half done. They're leather. Huh. That sounds interesting. I mean, if they work for you, then good, I'm glad. Because I know, Melanie, you do a lot of stitching. She's forever working on stuff. And different projects and hoops and patterns, all kinds of things. I think my fingers are just used to it now, to be fair. Because I really don't get shredded except for when I tighten the hoops. Good morning. And it's just some of them, you know, some of them, they're just really, that metal is really sharp on the top. I really don't want to say the C word, but I'm already thinking of like Christmas kits and Christmas designs. Christmas is always a little bit tricksy because I know some people don't celebrate Christmas. So I try to do it more like holiday themed, you know, just in case. We'll do one more here. And then move on to the other dark one. So there's two. I think they look so cool with the swapped colors in the middle. Obviously you could do the same color. Oh, I think I hear shaking upstairs. Obviously you could do the same color down the middle, but it would just get a little bit lost. Um, cause it would be all the same color. So it just depends on what you like. You hear doing a little shake. I'll show them down in a minute and be like, Let me out. Give me my breakfast. Where's my treats? So all I did was um all I did was choose two colors that's a light and dark of the same one. So it's almost like this color, if you added white, you would get this color. So that, um, you know, they look a little bit similar, but a little bit different. But again, could work with any color, any color that you've got. I've got hello, I'm from India. I've recently started watching your live classes. It's really helping me a lot. Good. I'm glad. She's gonna come down soon, so I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. But yeah, this is basically the gist over and over and over. <laughs> Not like terribly exciting or thrilling. Um, but this stitch is super useful. It's really great for leaves, for petals. Um, it's really great for like lavender if you want to stitch specifically lavender, which is what I normally use this stitch for. 
just imagine it in like a light purple. Um, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good little stitch. So there we go. I've got a lot to catch up on with still. I still have to do these little C blobs. I think today is going to be cozy up on the sofa day. Stitch in. You know? They do take forever. And you know what, if, if you don't wanna do as much detail in the back ones, then, then don't, you know? You absolutely don't have to. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie, in the last kind of like three or four months, I haven't really had a lot of orders for actual hoops. It's been mostly kits or patterns, which is fine with me, you know? I'll make a hoop, but I'll send you materials you can make your own hoop. Like, both are fantastic. Um, but in the last week, I've got so many people wanting an actual hoop. And then I still have the state patterns to make for people who wanted to stitch their own state. So actually, I have to make some of those today as well. And then I put some prints on the website yesterday. If you guys saw prints I think they're so cute but we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see if people like them or not I wanted to get some more prints made for Christmas time but if these don't sell then I might just not do it not do that or maybe do some postcards or something like that you know How long have you been embroidering for? Um, I, <laughs> I started messing around with threads a really long time ago. I was an art teacher first, so we, we always did like some stuff like this. Um, but doing embroidery like as my full-time job, I think 2014, 2015. Ooh, Melanie says, do you initial your hoops when I make them? I don't. It just comes with a little card that says that I've made it. Like a little business card or whatever. And a thank you note. I don't actually put anything on the, the actual hoop. Do you know what I saw the other day? I was watching um, Tattoo Fixers at, on Netflix here. And somebody, like the tattoo artist, signed his tattoo like in a super obvious place. Like on the person's leg. I was like, what? Does that happen? Like a, like a big, like it was big. It wasn't like hidden in the design. It was like, this was the design. And then underneath it, he like signed his name as the tattoo. I was like, it, huh? Surely you just put the design on there, right? You wouldn't like, I don't know. I found that weird. I found that really weird, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just me. Maybe people actually do that, you know? Yeah. So like all the tattoos are like, they're all drawn. So it's like, so it's tattoo fixers. So they come in with like a horrible tattoo and they like tell their little story about how they got it or whatever. And then the people like draw something to go over it, you know? So like, say I wanted to cover this fish and they'd be like, Okay, we'll make like the fish, you know, we'll make this like the dark part of that of the tattoo, like a person's shirt. And then that'll be like the darkest part. And then up here will be like a person. You know, to like cover it up. Um but, but man, like 
It was just like a straight up boom signature. I was like, okay. <laughs> Good. But yeah. That's true. Casey says you should label on the back of the hoop at least. It's your art. Yeah, I'm, you know, I might, I might try and do something like that. Normally it just comes with like a card that like I write on and stuff. Like a thank you and everything like that. Oh my gosh, how has it been 37 minutes already? I should, I should let you go then because it's going to be really long. Okay, so this is why I was saying if you're going to have any in the background, then do them first so that you can stitch over top because this one right here, I made it dark so it can go back into the background and these two will be lighter so that they can be pushed into the foreground. And because of that, I'm going to stitch these little leaves over top of this one. So again, with the layering. So it's just something that's quite a simple idea, you know? layering your stitches or stitching on top of other things um but actually it makes a really big difference when you're looking at it because you really don't want everything to be like evenly spaced out you know i know i've done stitch longs in the past where it's like that where like no design really overlaps another one they're kind of all spaced out easy to see and sometimes it does look nice but um as far as like a real underwater scene, if you look at pictures, them places are chaotic looking. And that's why I was so intimidated to do this in the first place because they're so overlapping. There's so many details. But I figured you guys can add and subtract whatever you like. So you don't have to make it exactly like mine. You don't have to add all the details. You can do the bare minimum if you want to. If you want to add more, you can. It's the same with the, the sea bobs here. Make them all one color if you want to. Do a stem stitch outline where the orange uh, outlines are instead of doing the split stitch. Like There's lots of ways. Like, just do a straight up satin stitch. Make them straight up and down. Done. Job done. There's really no wrong way to stitch this, except for my wrong way that I did yesterday with these guys, with the orange ones, because that did not look nice. Okay, I'm gonna go up to the tip of this one, and then I'm going to love you and leave you. I need to go on a bike ride still and then I need to get stitching. Redoing those two things. I think I'm going to add an outline and I think that will really help them. I think they just look a little bit unfinished and then I might do some um, French knots around the tips of them. Just, just along the tip so it looks like they're flowering a little bit. I don't know. I'll think about it until on Saturday when we do like a, you know. When I do my detail day. And honestly, like once we have everything else in front of them, they might look fine how they are, you know? Just because everything else has so many details. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. 
make sure that you go to the Barmy Fox S-A-L. Like and comment on other people's work. This is what we have so far. Let me take this off. And I'll finish these ones later. And hopefully I'll finish these ones before Saturday. And yeah, this is what we've got. So I hope you have a lovely, lovely Tuesday. Um, yeah, that's it for me. So enjoy your day and I'll talk with you tomorrow. All right. Bye.